Hi and welcome to a new Pixelmator tutorial here on Touch Plus. My name is Sebastian van der Velde and this time we are going to focus on one tool in Pixelmator and this is the Type tool. You can find the Type tool right over here in the Tools palette. You can also quickly activate it by pressing the letter T on your keyboard. Let's create a new document so we can show you what we can do with the Type tool. For this exercise, a document of 800 by 400 pixels will suffice. As usual, we will find all the tool options in the tool options bar at the top of the document window. Notice the three small dots at the far right of the bar. This means that there are more options available, but they don't fit on the bar. To make them visible, we will have to enlarge the document window like this. Awesome! Now we have all the type tool options visible. Let's go through them one by one. We start off here with the font selector. Clicking on this gives us a large list with all the fonts we have on our system. You see that the font name is also the preview of the font, making it much easier to find a suitable font for your project. For this example, I choose the font Arial. Next to the font selector, we can choose the typeface. The names of the typefaces displayed here depend on the font we have previously chosen. But luckily also here you get to see a preview. Here I will choose bold as the typeface. Next to the color box we have three buttons which make the text bold, italic or underlined. As you see since we chose bold as the typeface the bold button is pressed already. If I now also press the italic button you see that the typeface gets to be bold italic. Before we go to take a look at the rest of the options, let's type some text. There are several ways to add the actual type layer to a document and start typing. When we move the mouse over the document, the text above the mouse pointer says click to add text. So when we do this, we get the text box with the word text inserted. In the layers palette, a new layer gets added. The layer thumbnail is shown as a big letter T. This means that this layer is a type layer. Type layers are layers that only can contain text. They cannot contain anything else. Another way to add text is to click on the Add Text button in the Tool Options bar. This lets us quickly add a new type layer with the word text centered on the document. I can recommend the third method for adding text when you want to type more than one word in your document, like a sentence or several sentences. I quickly remove the previous text layers so we can see what we are doing. So the third method for adding text is by drawing a text box. We just click where we want the text box to begin and drag and release the mouse button where we want our text box to end. After that, we can quickly align the whole text box by clicking inside it and dragging it around. To edit the text, just click inside the text box once more and we'll see the cursor appear. Selecting text is done exactly the same as in a text editor. Double clicking for selecting a word, triple clicking for selecting a sentence, or just by clicking and dragging. Let's get back to the tool options bar and the font size option over here. In the list you see a few predefined sizes, but feel free to just type the size you want in the text box, like this. To the right we see the familiar color box where we quickly can choose a color or choose show colors to open a standard OS10 color picker and define a color more precisely from here. For now I choose one of the colors from the quick palette. The text alignment options can be found over here. By default it is set to align all text to the left in the text box, but we can also center the text, align it to the right and justify the text aligning it both to the left and the right. The last option only really works when you start writing paragraphs. These alignment features are for aligning text horizontally. The other three over here are for aligning text vertically in the text box, namely the top, center which is the default, and the bottom. For the next option I will quickly add more text so it appears on a new line. Do you see that the text box stays the same size? The little plus on the lower handle here shows that there is more text. When I drag the handle down I see the rest of my text again. The next option I want to show you is the line spacing. This determines the distance between each line. 
As you can see, I can decrease the distance in such a way that the text will overlap. Let's clean our text a bit and show you the letter spacing option. As you can guess, this determines the distance between each letter. This time it's given in percent. Also with line and letter spacing, you can type the values manually. I decrease the spacing here to minus 5% to bring the letters a tiny bit closer to one another. The last button in the tool options bar is the styles button. Clicking on it opens the styles palette. It is beyond the scope of this tutorial to go into all the details of the styles palette. For now, we will choose one of the predefined styles that Pixelmator ships with at the bottom of the styles palette. To create this letterpress effect, we can choose the grey inset style over here. This will set the desired shadows and the minute details that makes the text look like an inset typography or letterpressed. Now this looks pretty boring, so I'm going to adjust the style a bit. We start off by removing the white shadow and changing the fill to a gradient. This gives us a default gradient that is already looking pretty good. But I'm going to change the gradient colors nevertheless. So in the gradients palette I will choose a linear gradient that goes from transparent to black. Now we adjust the gradient in such a way that we get a slight shadow effect inside the letters. You see that this creates a tiny bit more depth and realism. To finish things off I will change the color of the background layer. We go to the edit menu and choose fill. Let's choose a pink kind of color like this. From the effects browser choose the stylized section and the noise effect. Make sure it is set to monochrome and use a low noise setting like for example 2%. This will give a slight textured effect. Finally, I want to give you one extra tip regarding type layers. When you control click on a type layer in the layers palette, you can choose amongst others, convert into pixels and convert into shape. Convert into pixels turns the type layer into a normal rasterized layer. This makes it possible to add all the effects from the effects browser to it. Convert into shape, converts the type layer into a shape layer. And this makes it possible for you to change the shape of each letter individually and create even more awesome designs. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial where we have gone through all the options of the type tool and added a style to the type layer to create a nice letterpress effect. See you back next time. Take care.